Good morning, Trinity. As you can see, uh, Mr. Darren is, he's on spring break, so uh, you got stuck with me. That's right. There you go. See Jesus uh, hanging on the cross. Uh, I can see Jesus uh, hanging on the cross. You can't look him over lost in love past go. Love past go. Love past go. And it's giving me hope to carry on. I can hear Jesus. I can hear Jesus saying, Father, forgive. I can hear Jesus saying, Father, forgive. What a thing he did in love has come. Love has come. Love has come. And it's giving me hope to carry on. I can see love. Love is all I want to see. Love can make a beggar rich, you can set a prisoner free. I know I can do it for you, God knows it did it for me. I can see love, love is all I want to show you love. Love's the only way to go in love. Love is all a man might need to know. Yes, I know. Giving me hope to carry on. I gotta carry on. Well, good morning, Trinity. It is good to see you today, first Sunday of Easter. Not after Easter, we're in the season of Easter. It's more than just one day, so it's good that. You're here, it's good that people are watching this online. So there's a lot of breaks this week, right? A lot of schools are off, they were on, people are on break. I, would, I took a couple of days off during the week just to kind of rejuvenate myself. But really, is it a break or does it lead to something else? Right, whatever happens to us, is it really what it is meant to be? Or does it lead to something else in its totality? We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But it's good to see you today. The, the weather is nice outside. It's going to be good in here. We appreciate Jeremy leading Sunrise Band and the, the beautiful music that they're going to play for us to bring and uh, elicit the spirit in the place today. Let's go to God in prayer. Let's pray. Oh God, we are so thankful for the day and this opportunity that we gather together. This is one day, one day of all of our lives. One day doesn't define who we are or anything about us. It's just a day. It's just a fact. But God, you're going to tell us a little bit more about a story. A story that has many facts that lead to something greater and bigger. It's because of the season we're in, the season of Easter. Open our hearts and minds. Let us just experience you like never before in these moments. Open our hearts and minds. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You hold the reins on the sun and the moon Like horses driven by kings Cover the mountains, the valleys below, the breath of your mighty wings. 
are treasures of wisdom and things to be known hidden inside your hand and in this fortunate turn of events you ask me to be your friend You ask me to be your friend And you, you are my first You are my last You are my future and my best And you, you are my first You are my last you are my future and my past the constellations are swimming inside the breath of your desire where could I run where could I hide from your heart's jealous fire All treasures of wisdom and things to be known Are hidden inside your hand And in this fortunate turn of events You ask me to be your friend You ask me to be your friend and you, you are my first, you are my last, you are my future and my past. And you, you are my first, you are my last, you are my future and my past. the beginning and the end You are the beginning and the end You are the beginning and the end You are the beginning And you, you are my first, you are my last, you are my future and my best. And you, you are my first, you are my last, you are my future. And you, you are my first, you are my last, you are my future and my past. My name is Thomas, and I struggle with doubt. I followed Jesus for years. From the very first day he called me, I saw things so amazing they defied explanation. I believed. But then things fell apart. I witnessed the betrayal that led to the cruel march to Calvary and his agonizing crucifixion. I survived. But everyone I knew scattered. My world collapsed. Then came news of the empty tomb, the very first Easter. But I resisted. The image of his broken, lifeless body was still burned into my memory. 
I experienced his death. And I couldn't believe. Not until I see the scars with my own eyes and touch them with my own hands, I told the others. I wasn't ready to put my trust in something again. But Jesus came to me. He knew my doubts. He even named them. But he wasn't angry. He didn't rebuke me or dismiss me. He looked at me with those familiar eyes and offered me his scarred hands and sighed. In that moment, I experienced his resurrection and I believed. I know firsthand it's difficult to believe in what you can't see. And yet all around you are people whose lives and stories have scars that bear witness to the meaning of Easter. Yes, these people have been wounded, but they've experienced redemption and healing through Jesus. Jesus' life, death, and resurrection were meant to rescue the doubters, the debtors, and the broken. People like you and me. He met my doubts with grace and love, and he only asked one thing of me. Believe. So that is who we're talking about today. Thomas. Right? When I say the word Thomas in this situation, what's the first word that comes to your mind? Doubt, right. That's right. So we, we, we think about that, and we call him the doubter. I'm going to read some scripture, and then we're going to talk a little bit. Maybe that'll change our perspective a little bit about who Thomas is. Let's go to the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. <clears throat> Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. I told you, you know, there's a spring break for many, many students, many schools this week. People are traveling, maybe just getting back today. Like I said, I was off for a couple of days this past week to just rest and relax, right? We need some time is what I might say. But time is one of those things that can be fleeting, we don't know what time really means or really is. I'm wearing this green bracelet today for a 12-year-old girl who has scoliosis, very severe. Time is not on her side, or so we believe. But that's not what we're going to believe. Right? She's getting ready to have a surgery and she's got a lot of road ahead of her. She has scoliosis, and that's a fact. But that's not her story. We're going to pray for this young girl, and God's going to do what God does. But what happens in a situation like this when we pray? We pray, we want something to happen when? Now. And it usually doesn't happen when? Now. It happens over time. So, the disciples are in the room where they had 
fled to once Jesus was crucified. Here we are a week later after Easter and the disciples are still in this room. Did the resurrection mean anything to them? I think if you look at this, you would probably say, no, nope. they're the same old disciples who didn't believe a word that Jesus had said. They're still behind the locked door. We've just finished saying Christ is risen indeed, hallelujah, and had a great Sunday. By the way, I haven't found any more furniture on the side of the road. If you were here last week and heard me talk about the love seat, not find any more furniture on the side of the road, but I'm still looking. But the reality is, is that the disciples are in the room and they're behind locked doors. So really, is the resurrection a big deal? Is it, if it's such a life-changing event, why didn't they not go on and do some great things? Why did they not just go on? Why did they lock themselves? Now, the scripture does say for fear of the Jews. It is in there. But if the resurrection is everything, they don't need to be afraid. So my question to you is, what has the resurrection done for you? Okay, you don't have to tell me, but I'm guessing that your life isn't any different today than it was last Sunday. Or really Friday. Or, right, it, it, it's not really the same. Nothing really has changed because of the resurrection. Right? We can come to church and not even have to talk about that. And your life isn't really really it's not really changed is it you, you don't see that immediate change that happens we look into the world it looks just about the same now when i look out i see the the trees have leaves that have blossomed and come out a little bit more but otherwise everything looks basically the same i, I don't see a lot that has changed it's easy for us to be critical of the disciples right because we believe we have all this knowledge we have all this history and we can just determine this, and we know that Jesus has done this, and we believe, and we believe, and we believe. I used to be critical of the disciples until I started preparing this this week, and I really had to look at my own life and thought, has my life changed because of the resurrection? And if I said just today, the answer would be no. But we're not going to talk about just today. I, I began thinking about what all of this means. And Christ's resurrection is a big deal. Right? I mean, it is why we gather. Without the resurrection, we go home. It's just nothing. We stand behind locked doors and we're afraid of the world. However, that's not what happens. The empty tomb is a life-changing event for all of us. The resurrection does make a difference in our lives. And here's the thing that we don't like to hear. It also takes time. We're going to pray for this 12-year-old girl with scoliosis who's going to have a, a very severe surgery and probably will have more and more surgeries and be filled with this for years to come. And we want things to happen now. We don't want things to happen later. We want to see a miracle now. We think the miracle is that it happens immediately in front of us. And we miss the miracles that happen when? Over time. Resurrection takes time. If you don't hear anything else today, hear that. Resurrection takes time. So when people come to me and go, well, Pastor, I prayed for my, my dying loved one, and they still died. Well, resurrection takes time. Does it mean that it, it's going to go in the way that you wanted to go? It just takes time. It's not a one-time event. Resurrection is something we grow into. It's a process. It's like when we become disciples of Christ, and, 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 and I'll be honest with you, there's some churches that just push and push. Oh, your life's going to be great. You've got to have Jesus, and it's all going to be wonderful. I've never met that yet, because life has been hard. Now, have some good things happen out of it? Yes. But that happens over time, not in the moment. You may think it's in the moment, because you have one of those great experiences or not, but it's, it's fleeting. 
I'm going to talk about that, that those are events. Those are events. They're facts. I had a great experience now, but that doesn't define who your life is. That's how we get to Thomas. Thomas, we call the doubter because he wasn't in the room. Why wasn't he in the room? In fact, if you look at it, wasn't he the brave one of the bunch that went behind the locked door? Hmm. Maybe what Thomas was doing, his doubt, was actually part of his believing. Right? So his doubt is a fact. It says his conversation with Jesus. But in reality, maybe it was his belief. Because we know over time what happened to Thomas is that he does believe. And in the end, and in the, the history of, of, of learning about what happens to the disciples later on in their lives, that he was a martyr, and that he led a great effort, I believe in India is where he supposedly had gone to. So that he, it wasn't that he just said, I, I got to see and I got to believe, and then, well, but what happens, happens to him? He confesses, I, I believe you. We don't hear the other disciples in this story saying that. It takes time. Resurrection takes time. I wonder if sometimes we come to Easter Sunday in the empty tomb and we expect to wake up on Monday and life being different. I, I probably think that. I probably think, oh my gosh, you know, people are just going to be excited and they're going to believe and life's going to be good and we're going to just, we're going to love one another and, and say nice things and Monday comes and wham, man, it doesn't seem to happen that way. That is part of what it means to be a disciple in the church. It isn't about all the rules and regulations. It's about our relationships over time. That's why I believe here at Trinity, we, we walk with one another through all the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. There's no need to judge one another on that. We all struggle. You know what this thing is? You point to someone, how many fingers are pointing back at you, Right? And so that's what we, it's easy for us to look at these disciples and say, look at them, they're behind the closed doors. Jesus is risen, hallelujah, my life's great. Well, no, it's not. You're not going to stand up and say, man, Pastor Scott, life's great for me. Today may be a good day for you, though. But in the totality of your life, there's been some hard moments. Resurrection takes time. The empty tomb is a fact, but the resurrection is a story. So facts are one instance, it's a snapshot. If we took a snapshot of all of our lives, there'd be some snapshots we'd want to hide from people. <laughs> if there were Polaroids out there, and I hope that there aren't, it, would be, it wouldn't be pretty. But if we make a movie of the resurrection of our life and see it in its totality, we will see that resurrection takes time. I'm not the same person I was when I was 21. Neither are you. Because resurrection takes time. This 12 year old girl is going to go to surgeries and we're going to pray for her and we're going to wonder, God, how are you going to do this? What's going to happen? The story that's going to happen is that all of a sudden people are going to be praying all over the world for this young girl and doctors and nurses and staff are going to do what it is they're called to do and we're going to believe that God's going to do what God's to do. It's not for us to, to determine the outcome. Resurrection takes time. Because in the end, if when we die, it took that long for resurrection to happen, right? We need to be mindful of those things. That resurrection is a story. Maybe we need to understand this resurrection is that movie of our life. All of the facts put together that leads to something greater. The facts are just the starting point of the story. What happens today is a starting point moving forward. What happened to the disciples and the empty tomb and the resurrection and for Thomas was the beginning point to go forward. We don't always believe. 
We, we doubt. It's okay to ask questions. I don't know if you've grown up in a church that refused to listen to questions, but I'm one that believes we, we need to ask questions. That's how we learn. That's how God speaks to us. If you just believe everything I say, then I can say anything I want. But I hope we would ask questions and go, huh, let me go back and look at that. I'm not sure I understand that. That's why we have disciple courses and other small groups that we gather together and we talk about these things. We talk about life. You know, when, when you're a parent for the first time, you don't have a manual that says this is how you do it. What happens? You talk to other people. Or for the best part is you just make it up as you go. Right? Amen on that. You just make it up as you go. And some days you feel like you're the worst parent in the world. But over time, resurrection takes time. Your parenting should be looked at over the totality, not one day or one moment. Your life should be the totality, not one event that happened. I, I say this a lot, and I've unfortunately had the opportunity to speak at several persons' funerals who have committed suicide. Now, you're talking about something that's, wow. However, one event doesn't define somebody. We say that now, we say that then, that's what I say. And I believe God believes that. I believe that's what God says. One event, it's an event. It's not a story. Because what's the story behind the one event? What's the story behind this resurrection? So you know the end of Thomas's story. He died. He went on. It took time. He came around. He was a great disciple. So what's going to happen to you? What's your starting point? How are you going to move forward? Where are you going? What's the next steps that you're going to take? Well, let me ask you this. So we're locked behind doors of our own lives, just like the disciples. We can laugh at them. <laughs> Look at them. Yeah, but we lock ourselves in rooms, figuratively, and we're afraid to step outside. Because why? Many reasons. But what are the doors that are locked in our life? Because remember what happened. Jesus walked into that room. He didn't need the door. So Christ can walk into the room of our lives. And I think that's important for us to remember. The walls and the doors are all around us, but we do not have to be afraid. He steps into the midst of our house. Speaking about stepping into the midst of our house, Bonnie Riley, will you raise your hand over here? Bonnie Riley is our new youth director and adult discipleship director. She starts today. Her time clock starts today. Now she, so let's welcome her. I know her son Jake and Lydia, and I believe that's your mom. Is that right, Bonnie? Oh, your friend. Okay, I can't see who that is. Great. Well, good. I'm glad that you're here today. I, I don't mean to call you that old. I'm sorry about that. Okay, it's mass. Yeah, and the light's in my eyes. I can't see. See, that one event doesn't define us. We move on from that. And this is her first day here, so if Bonnie misses something, her life isn't defined by one day. It's the totality, right? That's what we're talking about. So today is a day that we need to remember that, okay, we're going to live the best we can, and it's okay to doubt, it's okay, but in the end, what does Christ ask us? To believe. He just asks us to believe that he comes through the locked doors of our life, that this time that we're in is fleeting around us. In the end, we got to get out of a house. we got to go. we got to be out. And let Christ work in us and through us. So as a church, that is our calling. It's the calling last week, it's the calling this week, it's the calling forever and ever. And what to do? God tells us what to do and teaches us what to do. So Thomas is the doubting, we call him doubting, but he's also the confessing Thomas. Because he confesses who Jesus is. And we can do that in many ways just by the how we live. So this week I spent some time uh, with a member of the church, Bob Story. Some of y'all know Bob, right? right. And so um, he's not well. And I spent some time with him on Thursday. 
Um, and I was, you know, I told you I took a couple of days off. And I said, no, I need to go see him. So I went to him. Um, it, 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 really, it really shook me because it really put in place what's really important. Right? I mean, it's easy to get wrapped up in, you know, wearing a mask and how many people are in here and who's going to keep safe and employees doing this and all of these things and we don't like this and the air is hot in here, it's cold in here, it's light in here, it's dark in here and all these things that we get wrapped up in. I got ready to leave and he was fidgeting. Again, he's not well. And he stuck his fist out so I kind of fist bumped him. I'd given him communion a little earlier because he had asked me to come and and do that. Gave me a little fist bump. I kept fist bumping him. And then he did like this. Opened his hand. And I shook it. And I looked into his eyes. That's the totality of our life happens. It can't happen right before our eyes. The call on the way into church this morning is that Bob died last night. Now more than ever, my visit is more than just a visit. Friends, I'm telling you, we can nitpick all we want. But this journey of life, you know, it may be hot in here to some, but that's a fact. But the story of our life When you're getting ready to die, you aren't going to care. But I hope that someone's standing with you. Christ stood with these disciples in a locked door, in a locked room, and they were afraid. Christ stands with you in your locked room and door, with the doors locked, when we're afraid. That's what we're talking about. We need to get out of these locked doors and locked rooms we need, to, we need to, to live our life and just be aware that facts can be facts, and, and I get that. They have a, a place and a role in our life. But when the facts become our story, then that's a problem. Let our story be the story. So we mess up today. Guess what? No one has lived tomorrow. No one. No one's lived tomorrow. No one's lived, what time is it? 10.04. Well, no one's lived at 10.05 before in this country, at this place. Now, you can say, well, Scott, you know, around the world and around the globe, see, that'd be facts. Right here, right now, no one's lived, right? No one's lived. And so that's what we we, we want to be able to to hear. So it's okay to adapt. It's okay to not understand. Because Christ will come in front of you. And I pray, just like Bob took his hand and took it out to me. That's what Christ is saying. Come. Here, I got you. Just give me your hand. Just give me your hand. So get out of the house. Don't let it, don't let it overtake you. So I'm going to ask us just to take a deep breath in. Take a deep breath in and then let it out. That's the spirit within you. That's what guides you. Not up here. In here. That's what guides you. Right? We can have all the smarts, but facts live up there. The story lives here. Within our heart. I pray for hope and courage and strength. For the 12-year-old girl that I wear this band for. For Bob Story's family, the days ahead for them, and for you, that you will find that hope and courage. You will not let, you will not be afraid. And if you are afraid, and if you doubt, that's okay, because Christ is still going to come among you. And I hope someone's with you at the end of your story. Oh, interesting. How about Bob's last name? Story. Right? See how that works? See how that all ties in together? He lived a great story, 90 years old. We'll remember them.
So get out of the house. You've got strength. You've got power. You've got glory. All in the resurrection. But remember, resurrection takes time. Let's pray. Oh God, we're so thankful for this opportunity to gather together today, to, to be in this place and to, to it, it, just be with one another. God, we come with family and friends and we, we worship together in the ways that we do. We enjoy hearing your word. We enjoy the music. We enjoy just being and living and breathing. But God, life does, does come at us hard and fast. And we pray. We pray that whatever comes our way, oh God, we know that it won't define us, but that it is just part, part of the story that, comes, that will come before us. We've yet to live the rest of that story. Why don't we just start today? God, this is the first Sunday of Easter, Sunday that follows Easter Sunday. And a lot of people are on break and taking some time, and that's good, rejuvenated. We can't stay there. God, we know we want to go to a magical place like the Magic Kingdom, but God, when we open the door, it looks like the State Fair. God, how do we reconcile that? How, how do we, we think that it's going to be one thing and it turns out to still be nice, but it's just different? You feel that way about your word sometimes. As you say, that all we got to do is do this. But I think today, God, you, we can hear that it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. Healing does take time. Growth takes time. None of us are the size we are now when we were born. And for many of us, with the wrinkles on our faces and our bodies, our bones that ache, the joints that are just don't work the way that they used to, it's part of the story. It happened over time. But the ways that we've grown... The ways that we love one another, our experience of you, God, has grown over time so that we can, we can experience you now in things and ways that we've never seen you before. That as the trees continue to burst forth and the blooms come and then we pray as the pollen continues to move on, a necessary part of the cycle of growth and of life and, yes, of resurrection. What was dead is now alive again. And as much as we pray and we have our feelings for our dear brother Bob, we also know that there's a 12-year-old girl who is also fighting. And what's her story going to be? We're going to pray for this girl. Her name is Erin if you want to remember that name. God, you know it. We need to know that. Can't wait to see what happens to her life. And whatever happens, it's going to be a miracle because your hand is in it. Miracles aren't defined by what we say, but it's what you do. We thank you for today. We thank you for this opportunity to gather together. It's a miracle that we're here. And we're going to enjoy it, and we're going to live into it in the best way possible. Oh God, thank you. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Get out of your house.
Some people think you're distant, just some words on a page. You're nothing more than fables handed down along the way. But I've seen you part the waters when no one else could pull me from the deep. That's who you are to me. Some people think you just live in cathedrals made of stone. But I know you live inside my heart. I know that it's your home. And I've seen you in a sunset And in the eyes I'm a stranger on the street That's who you are to me You're amazing, faithful Love's open door When I'm empty you fill me Hunger for more of your mercy Your goodness, Lord, you're the air that I breathe That's who you are to me Sometimes I have my doubts, I'm sure that everybody does And I wonder when I stumble, am I still worthy of your love? Down on my knees, you're everything I need You're amazing, faithful, love's open door When I'm empty, you fill me Hunger for more of your mercy, your goodness, Lord, you're the air that I breathe. That's who you are to me. That's who you are to me. You're forever holy. You're the Lamb who is worthy. My forgiveness, my healer, the Messiah, my redeemer. You're amazing, faithful, love's open door. When I'm empty, you fill me with hunger for more of your mercy, your goodness. Lord, you're the air that I breathe. That's who you are, you are greater, higher, over it all in your presence. Jesus, I stand in awe of your mercy, your goodness. Lord, you're the air that I breathe. That's who you are to me. Y'all just stand and clap along, and then we'll get you out of here. I know a place where we can go. To lay the troubles down in your soul I know a place where mercy flows Take the stains, make you water the snow Like a tide, it is rising up deep inside the world that moves and it does. you from a life water that brings the dead to life Whoa, 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 whoa we're going down to the river, down to the river, down to the river to pray. Let's get washed by the water, washed by the water, rise up in amazing praise. Let's go down, down, down to the river, you will be changed. Let's go down. I've seen it move in my own life Took me from dusty roads into paradise All of my dirt, all of my shame Drowned in the streams that have made me born again Like a tide, 
it is rising up deep inside a current rent that moves and makes you come alive. Living water that brings the dead to life. Whoa, whoa, oh, oh. We're going down to the river, get down to the river, down to the river to pray. Let's get washed by the water, washed by the water, and rise up in amazing grace. Let's go down, down, down to the river, you will be changed. Let's go down, down, down to the river, never the same. Like a tide, it is rising up deep inside a current that moves and makes you come alive. Living water that brings the dead to life. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. we're going down to the river, get down to the river, down to the river to pray. Let's get washed by the water, get washed by the water, rise up in amazing grace. Let's go down, down, down to the river. You will it be changed. Let's go down, down, down to the river. Never the same. So when we go down to the river, we're never the same. But remember, it takes time. Doesn't happen all overnight. So this is just today is a fact right here right now but it's not your story what are you what's your story going to be what's your resurrection story going to be i hope it's full of courage and hope and in love all in jesus name we go amen I think the mic unplugged because it fell out later on. I put it back in. Oh,